Ian, um, you obviously flagged that there was a bit of planning going into the selection of his team um, earlier in the week. Yeah, I guess the Scott Barrett position in the blind side stands out again. Um, you tried it a couple of times this year and it worked well. What's the reason behind it? Is it? Tried it a couple of times this year and it worked well. So um, it's we've been really pleased when he's played six for us. We know he can. He's done it well. I thought his test, first test against Ireland, when we had a great performance at Eden Park, he was a massive part of that. And been a whole lot of circumstance and injuries and suspensions that have stopped us being able to dabble with that further. But um, feels right. Mark Talia, um keeps the spot on the right wing. Just how impressed were you with his performance last week and? How much did that go to selecting him in the lineup this week? Yeah, I said the time. I, he, he was it was an impressive debut. He looked calm. He looked, um, you know, there's a few things that he could tidy up. But overall, you know, you couldn't probably want a better debut in many ways. So um, I think he's put down a marker, and it's just a a reward for form, really, and getting opportunities, taking it. Have you seen the English team? What's what's your, what are you expecting from them on Saturday? Um, look, I only just had a quick look walking down here, so it's, um, you know, they, they they know their game well. They've, you know, they're still probably searching for a few combinations, but I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a big test. You know, they'll be up for it, and you know, we know they like to, they play a really strong pressure game, and that's what they'll be looking to do against us. Ian, obviously, you've already retired winning this <coughs> 100th cap. Just try to put into terms. What an achievement that is to have that longevity, where he sort of sits in the, the greats of all black rugby. Mm, well, um, look, he's been there since 2012, um, and you know he's been a massive part of, of that engine room of an all black pack for a long, long time. He's multi skilled. He's he's got that tough edge to him, but he's also got that skill edge around the park that, that's been a big feature of, of his game. So, you know, like he's a, he, he's a, he's a major contributor behind the scenes. He's the heart and soul of our, our group. And the fact that he's sort of putting his arm around Sammy Whitelock and I think that's a pretty much a record-breaking partnership as well. It's, they've been a, a, a big part of that pack for a long time. And I think those two, along with, with, with Scott, are, are really forming a... A nice trio for us. As you said, it's a, a record-breaking partnership, Mountain Brody and Sam. I suppose when they played their first game together, it would have been unthinkable. They, they pass an iconic partnership like both at Matt Field. But what's it like for you to know that there's almost two names that you can put straight down on the team sheet with those two with the, the way they conduct themselves? Yeah, it's always nice writing their names down. I, um, you know, I, I think it's. Um, I don't. Chuck cold water over it, but you know Scott's also been putting his hand up strongly in that space too. So there is three of them fighting for two, and it's probably pretty good that Scott can play six. So, so this coach doesn't have too many grey hairs making that decision. But he's, um, you know, they they uh, they trust each other, they they complement each other because they're slightly different style locks, and and I know that um, you know Sam's going to be delighted for his mate, but uh, I know that they'll. Won't talk too much about it. They'll probably look at each other and raise their eyebrows and then hoe into training and get stuck into a game and maybe have a quiet drink afterwards together. If I could just ask you a question about the other man who'll win a 100 cap on Saturday, Owen Farrell, and how much of an admirer from afar you've been of his over the years. Yeah, look, he's clearly done a, an amazing job for England. I mean, anyone who can play 100 tests, it's phenomenal. And, you know, he's done it in a couple of positions too. You know, he's transitioned from 10 to 12 and... and and captaincy and a whole lot of things on his shoulders and um, and, and you know, I think he's handled himself really well on and off the park and it's a credit to him. In, uh, just to make up for your glimpses, um, are you saying these two most forwards to uh, midfielders and, and Sammy Sony? What, what was the thinking behind that? What are you, what are you hoping that, that group will bring? Well, they've got a job to do for first, so that's pretty... Um, Pretty normal. Um, two loose forwards, I think, is purely based on having three three guys who can play lock on the, in, the, in the fifteen. So I think it's a bit of a luxury to carry with four locks, but it gives us a chance to to have you know both Shannon and Hoss. Um, I think it's a good reward for Hoskins. We're, we were pretty pleased with Akira last week, and Hoskins, I think, you know, um, 
Japan test played well and it's a chance for him, you know, it was Shannon on the bench, we've got specialist eight cover with Hoskins. Um, so that's that's that decision and really we just think Davy and, and Albie both experienced different skill sets. We've got the ability for Julie and Rico to go out. So it's just part of the, the combos that we've been playing with over the last twelve months really to get to the point that um, you know, we can chop and change and maybe change the game if we need it later on. So a big old week, um, first time at Twickenham in, in four years. What's your assessment of how the team's face, how ready they are to, to perform and finish the year well? Yeah, we're ready. It's, um, it's you know, I think it's we, we've really targeted these three tests, Wales, Scotland and England, um, and we knew all of them would be tough up here and... and and for some of our guys, it's the first time up here, so every test has been massive, and, and this is another one. So, but you know, delighted with where, where we've got to um, the last couple of tests. But um, you know, so again, just like the last two weeks, we just got to climb up um, and, and get up on Saturday and, and put a game on the park that we're proud of. Nearing the end of, of, your, of your tour, how do you reflect on this this year as a, as a whole and where the team are now? Well, it's a good question to ask me after the test, I reckon, you know, without trying to deflect it. But like I said, we're in a good space and and I like where our game's going. We've we've had a plan to, to try and grow some options to, to cement some combinations and and to change a few things in our game. And uh, um, and so if I if I look at the last three or four weeks of where we've got to in that space where we're pretty delighted, but it's uh, playing a different type of team this week than what we have the last two. They like to play a real strong pressure game and 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 to squeeze your game and your mindset a little bit. And so, you know, the, the challenge for us against this particular opposition is to make sure that we, you know, how good are we actually making sure we don't go into our shell. And the, and the challenge of the, of the rugby championship, I know, back a little bit, has that always helped shape the team and, and you know, strengthen the team in it? Yeah, well, I mean, the challenges of the rugby championship that they've been and gone, um, but there's also three trophies in the cabinet from that same competition. And um, so, when you look at the Freedom Cup and the rugby championship and the Bledisloe, so whilst we've had some challenges, I think we've we've climbed out of that a little while ago. And um, and so the the trajectory has been in the right direction. We've and like I said, I think we've we've taken the lessons, but um, we, we kind of like where we're at right now. Yeah, most of the big teams in World Rugby play each other quite regularly. So the fact that New Zealand haven't played England, they've only played well, obviously the third time since 2014, does that add to the spectacle, that kind of unfamiliarity? Yeah, I think so. It, um, it's, it's been a rarity. I don't know why, but it just seems to have been. And, um, but oh, it makes it more special and from, from that sense. Um, it's a great stadium. We love being here. And... Uh, but you know the draw over a cycle seems to throw up those irregular sort of things, and for some reason it's been England. So, and you know the fact that our last game was at a World Cup. There's a lot of talking points for everyone, but you know quite frankly it's a it's a one-off game for us. It's the end of a, a three-game program, and the opportunity to test ourselves against a slightly different opponent is what we what we're cherishing. Is that semi-final results are the source of inspiration, motivation for a lot of the players? Don't think so. Um, feels a long time ago, and there's so much of a change in the world since then, isn't it? And it's, um, you know, I'm sure it's uh, it'll it'll be mentioned, but really, I don't think it's relevant at all to to where we're at, and it's probably not relevant at all to where England's at right now, because you know they're a team that's searching for consistency, you know, and and I'm not, I'm not sure they'll get a high motivation out of the 2019 game. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just ask about Manny Tolani? Um, obviously, he's, he started for England on um, on Saturday and he was sort of the, a thorn in your side in, in 2012 and, and also in 2019. I know that there's been a lot of mutual respect from the All Blacks towards him over the years. Um, I just wondered how, what kind of Manny you're, you're expecting this weekend and, and how much he, um, how, how much of your thoughts he occupies as, as a, a prep. Uh, it hasn't been special focus, but look, he's you know we 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 know we, we we prepare for a player to play at their best, 
and he's played at his best against us a couple of times. <laughs> and so, um, you know, he's a powerful player. We know that, and we 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 know that he's probably going to see this as a big opportunity for him to stake a claim too. So, um, you know, we just got to be watchful, uh, like we have with everyone. But he's he, he's a big, strong man, and he and he seems to like to get his hands on the ball against us and run hard and. Um, and so we'll be watching it. Um, Rico Yuani is playing against him for the first time, I think. Um, has, has he sounded out advice from the likes of Conrad Smith Marnoni this week about playing against him? Obviously, I know Rico started out as a winger and is now in the yep. 13 and obviously playing against him for the first time. Yeah, I don't think so. Well, he may have, but not, not through me, he hasn't. But um, no, Rex is, um, you know, Rex is very clear. He's He's had a great season for us and and um, he, he's feeling fresh, um, and I know he likes to to, to play against. He, you know, he'll take the challenge of playing against a, a quality thirteen, and, and I think he gets the best out of him. So, uh, be a good battle. Ian, sorry, you've nearly got obviously both his back at fullback, and Geordie's in midfield. And how sort of easy is it for the for the player to, to like move positions game game by game as you go? Um. Yeah, pretty easy. Well, I mean, it's not something we've done every game, but it's just that last week we there was a bit of management of Richie, I think, and it's also a chance for Rit to, to Bodie go back in because he he played at 15 at the end of the rugby championship. Um, they both do well. It, uh, Bodie brings an extra, uh, uh, I think, an extra width to our game with his communication at 15. I thought. Um, last week we we missed that a little bit, and and I thought uh, last week was a case of a ten that felt a little bit isolated because the outsides weren't communicating as well as they should have. And so you know, for Bodie, he seems to um, improve our area when he goes into fifteen. But um, so that's good for him, and it's also a challenge for the other guys who want to be there.